Hello, everyone. We're the WARE project, which stands for Wearable EMG Analysis for Rehabilitation. And I'm Ting, so I'm, I'm responsible for the BLD system and the communication parts of the project. And WARE is responsible for integrating the system together and also the PCB design. And we have Manny as the only mechanical student, so he will be responsible for all the mechanical aspects of the project, and also he did the SD subsystems. And those are our clients, Dr. Chang, which is from uh, Carlton U, and Dr. Lamar, which works at the Ottawa Hospital Research Institute. And so this is the agenda for today. I will go over how the wear system works, um, and also I'll uh, give you updates on the GAN chart and the progress of our project. And Kawar will be going into details about how he integrated the system and also the PCB schematics and everything. And Manny will go over uh, mechanical design and also the renders we came up with for the final um, system. So where system is basically uh, our goal is to um, come up with a, like a smart wearable device. Ideally, uh, it would be like like a watch size, but like we're still in development. Um, so basically, um, you would have electrodes attached to your skin, and from those electrodes, you would measure noise, uh, and, and then it gets sent to the uh, controller itself, and after the controller processes all the information. It could either be stored into an SD subsystem for further analysis, or a Bluetooth, which will stream through an app or some other preferable uh, communication, like a computer or some sort. And that's basically how the system would work. So you got a um, electro array here attached to a skin surface, and then you. Um, record all the noise and data that collects the um, muscle activities and then you uh, then store it, the process into the like, memory and then furthermore you can choose um, to go over Bluetooth to like stream the data so you can see all of the stuff that's going on on your muscles. That's uh, basically how it works. And uh, it was this project was initially uh, came up with the master students from the part of you, and brought to our client and our client um, further on the project, and now we're here. So this is the pro progress of the project, and so uh, on the top part would be most of the first semester, which we heavily based on development and uh, accomplished. Uh, the, um, the goals that set between our clients, which is uh, scope, mm -hmm. and so we each uh, separate it into like subsections. So we focus on like the functionality of each subsection, and so this semester we can focus on more on integrating all of the subsections together, so we can actually have a finalized product in the end. Uh, and currently, we're uh, we are these uh, we're successful of. Um, interfacing with all the SD and uh, Bluetooth and the main controller together and we were able to get um, proper signals from the measurements and uh, Quora has, uh, has gone to finalizing the PCB design so we can have it ready and ship uh, the design to, uh, to the manufacturer soon because uh, we know there's a delay with, uh, um, with the manufacturers and yeah and hopefully we're, we'll get the parts uh, made by the end of March and be ready for the um, AC day. Hi guys, uh, so this was the original uh, scope of our project, which we agreed on. It was supposed to be a user friendly device, uh, 8 channels of data acquisition. When I say 8 channels, uh, what I mean is it has 8 uh, op amps, differential, uh, differential op amps that get about 16, 16 electrons essentially. We get 8 channels of data. And all 8 channels should be logged onto an SD card. Or somewhere that's it's removable data storage for post post analysis. Uh, it has to be battery powered and rechargeable, obviously, and wearable, portable, as well as uh, a Google Drive. So this is our third phase of the project, and the first two phases uh, 
credit, uh, Google, uh, to the sacrifice credit of Google Drive. So, 80 trees can upload their code, while the progress reports to this folder. Uh, this was the, uh, so these are the original scopes, and everything has been done here, accomplished. Currently, uh, so the two year PCB um, was part of our uh, dependent delivery, which meant that if we accomplished all these, and we move on to the PCB. Uh, so it's currently progress, and this is the last scope we've left to accomplish, which is two channels of air is visualization or DLE, and I've accomplished one so far. Uh, so we actually went ahead and revised the project scope since we are ahead of, sort of like ahead in terms of basic functionality. And we've actually managed uh, to accomplish our do a fully, fully, fully PC. I've added a touch screen, interactive display, created sort of an oscilloscope to see live graphic of the data. Uh, I've also incorporated a system diagnostics mode where when the device wakes up, it goes to each individual subsystem to check everything is operational before it actually moves on. Uh, I've also gone ahead, or actually gone ahead and created a Windows app which was designed in Python for Postbus to actually graph the data from the SDR. Um, we have also incorporated a 9 degrees of freedom orientation sensor, which is not part of the scope, but it is a part a requirement of the device system to function in the end. Uh, the mechanical enclosure design was also a uh, dependent deliverable, which we have since accomplished. And I'd like to mention that we created actually the product line. So uh, the original approach did not need a screen, but it needed uh, an RGB indicator, a status indicator. But the problem is, in development, we do not really know how a user will actually use it. So I do not know the end result, how many buttons I would need or what exactly, what functionality to add. So I actually incorporated the LCD touchscreen, just create buttons on the fly and make sure everything works. And we also created a 3D videos and photography renders for marketing uh, AR data purposes. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna drive into the tech section now. Forgive me, I have to fly through this fast because I cannot condense everything in 10 minutes. Uh, so this is a, a, a schematic, there are three sheets to the schematic. So I started out creating the whole thing in a blocks and using block reduction techniques, so these are all the individual blocks of the circuit. This is a power section. There are three ICs here generate, generating at two and a half volts, negative two and a half and five volts. And this is a, a battery management section that charges the circuit. Uh, this is the second sheet, which incorporates the microcontroller and the other subsystems. That's the microcontroller we chose to go with, ARM. Uh, this is the Magnoff sensor as well as uh, the VLE subsection here. Uh, VLE 4.0, that's the one we went with. These are just uh, four buttons that we use once for power and three for different volts. So as a logic shifter, since we're using a 3.3 volts, uh, this one shifts the logic to 5 volts for the RGB or our screen. Uh, final section was the challenging one, that's the uh, AFE, the analog front end that I was uh, we were given by Texas Instruments. So I reverse engineer that whole board and come up with uh, these buses, these are your electro arrays. Uh, the 16 uh, channels here to, it's just a, it's just a capacitor filtration array that filters and sends it to the AFE, which in turn sends the data over SPI to our microcontroller. We're explain a little bit about the data acquisition. So the AFE has eight channels of data and uh, it's a 24 bit A to D per channel. So you multiply that, it comes to 192 bits plus another 24 bits as a status header, which is sends, every sample it sends uh, status headers saying these pins are on, this is what you requested, this is what I'm sending in the beginning. This is how data gets sent. Uh, so initially, the last team had a different controller and their code was developed in 2012 by, uh, there's an open source community online, uh, they implemented their code. Anyways, so ever since 2012, uh, a lot of the things have changed, and I do know how we call SPI transactions, things like that. So in order to implement the board through the current controller, which I chose, uh, I had to find buffer, find and fix like some certain buffer issues that were occurring. And I had help from a Google engineer actually sat down with me and helped me through that, those issues. Uh, updated some of the software drivers as well as edited the libraries that we use. There are about eight different libraries right now. I had to edit them to use current SPI workloads. Uh, as far as uh, data login is concerned, so a project can be categorized generally in data acquisition, visualization, logging, and processing. Uh, I explain acquisition, this is uh, more of logging. So we, we did some research, came up with the best card uh, based on what a client needed. Uh, this is a standard 32 gigabyte, 100 megabits per second write and read speed, which is more than enough for our project. As you can see, I've been successfully able to isolate that and read. Uh, the, this is a 54 byte hex array which corresponds to 24 bytes in uh, binary. This is a status error. 
the time slot associated with the reads come from each individual channel. In terms of uh, data logging, we also, like I said, we covered the night of uh, orientation sensor. And yeah, we've been able to read the data from the sensor, uh, night of sensor successfully, as well as store it in parallel with the other year reads. In terms of data visualization, so really is a big challenge for us. So last team picked up this module from uh, NR, it's made by uh, data from Mixed Data Park Warfare. The problem is this board is limited to 9600 bits per second for UR, which is enough to get one channel off. We, our scope that we agreed on initially was two channels, so I did some quick math and it turns out that this, this thing was not able to actually uh, transmit the channel across uh, at 9600. So we tried to, we took a, quite a while to actually change the baud rate. The problem is, Adafruit's library is hard coded to start or initialize this module at 9600 always. So I, I actually had to edit the library and go in there and change. So I was finally successfully able to somehow get change to 115200, which is more than enough to send two channels of data across. So that's uh, that's what it looks like across the other part of that. Also, as part of our data visual, uh, visualization, uh, we've got to develop uh, an app in Python, which takes uh, data from that you just saw uh, earlier from the X-ray on the SD card, reads it, and it actually translates to an EMG graph. So what you're seeing is actually one channel. Obviously, we need much more data across a longer period of time, different problems. And that's an EMG spike right there. So after recording, it becomes like eight channels, which I have to do. Uh, I'm still working through how to uh, present this properly. As you can see, I'm experiencing kind of noise issues right here. These channels are supposed to be off, but I'm experiencing certain noise issues, which I have to isolate and find out why. Uh, regards to PCB so PCB is a big challenge because I've done generally two layers before. But this is this is a product that requires four layers that we actually agree on. Uh, those are the four layers. I have a uh, high to the laser to power, uh, ground, routing for the microcontroller, as well as uh, routing for the analog front end. And we came up with the final product. Uh, so the way I built this is I built the circuit first, did the testing, make sure it worked on hardware. Then mimic it in software like with the schematic. Uh, so everything has been parallel so far. So I'm really best at it, as well as the documentation. Um, and now I'm going to take over for the enclosure. Hey guys, my name is Manindra. So my key role was to design a mechanical enclosure for the system. So all the electronic system was embedded inside the enclosure. The pit was designed on solid walls. So initially we went with the two approaches: one with the LCD touch screen, another with the RGB indicator. So having the screen makes it more user friendly and interactive and we can select different modes and operations and, live, and as Cooper mentioned we have a oscilloscope, it, it displays live EMG data and whereas RGB just indicates the functionality of the, the modes by changing the LED colors. So our scope was to make a wearable device. So the device must be tied around the human leg or human arm. So to tie it we made two straps on the side of the enclosure, these two straps, as you can see, the 3D render as well. So these, the we use Velcro to Velcro as it was one of the easiest and safest way because no allergy was found uh, with related to Velcro, um, and it is easily available in most of the Canadian stores. Enclosure dimensions are 115 in length and 70 mm in width and 30 mm by height. So we used for prototyping, we used PLA plastic. But our final design must be of ABS, and most of the enclosures are made of ABS plastic. So budget and current expenses. So our total budget was around sixteen hundred dollars. So in which the subsections are made, hardware electronic components were around thousand dollars, and the pr printed circuit board and shipping includes three hundred dollars, and contingency most of it is one fifty dollars. So we made some purchases in the last, in the end of the last semester. So we bought a TZ, uh, our preferred microcontroller jumper kit and uh, VLE modules and a 9 of IMS sensor about $270 from DigiKey and from Amazon we bought, we bought our micro SD card, the preferred one and the flash drive for about $40 and total expenses that we made till date is around $300 and we, the remaining expenses that we have is around $1250. So the challenges that we faced, the hardware. As, as the system was very, the electronic part of this system was very complex, 
with both analog and digital circuits. Uh, AFC was the biggest challenge to interface with AFC. AFC was the biggest challenge for us. Uh, PCB design, uh, as Kuba mentioned, we, we are planning to make a four layer PCB. So, the routing of the PCB is one of the biggest challenges currently we have. Um, the software challenges is customizing the libraries for VLE subsystem and knowledge of object oriented programming was needed. Um, if, and we are using a next gen display uh, for the LED, LCD screen. So, we need to program that too. And for that, we need low level coding and GUI based editor software. So, as this subsystem, when we tested as this subsystem, there was a loss, loss of data. So, to overcome that, we need to add buffers. So, we did that in a code.